When you first open Stellarium, this is what you'll see, the night sky. Now, if you open it at a different time of day, maybe you'll see a daytime sky. But I opened it now, and I see a nighttime sky. First of all, we have to configure Stellarium to work with your location. So let's do that. If you take a look down here at the lower left-hand corner, you'll see that you're in Paris and not in Ogden or wherever else you may be. So first of all, let's set your location to where you are. I'll go over to the left side of the screen and a toolbar pops out. I'll click the top option, which is for the location window. And there it is. Instead of Paris, I'm going to choose Ogden, Utah. So I'll just scroll up a bit. There's a lot of places here. So let's see what we have. Um, and there's Ogden, United States. I'm going to click that. That changes the location to Ogden. You can change it to whatever location you happen to be at. And I'll click this box down here uh, that says use current location as default. So now whenever you open Stellarium, it will come to this location. And you can close that window. There's one other setting that we have to do. So let's go down again, go over to the sidebar. I'm going to click this wrench. This is the configuration window. And notice that the extra tabs comes up. If it doesn't come up, just click the extra tab and go down under additional buttons and click the first box, which is for show location, I'm sorry, show constellation boundaries button. So there we go. And this will allow the constellation boundaries button to be seen on your bottom toolbar. And we can get out of that. Okay, now Stellarium is set up for your location. And this is what you see. If you were out on Ogden, but when? What time is it? So let's go over to the side toolbar again, and we'll take a look at this second button, which is the opens the time date window. So let's open that to show the date and time. This shows that we are in the year 2019 on September 23rd at 22 hours, 0 minutes, 0 seconds. In other words, 10 p.m. So we'll just leave that there. Of course, you can set it for whenever you'd like. You can uh, set it for uh, later. This would be midnight. Here's earlier. This would be at 8 p.m. And notice that now the sky is light. You can, uh, the sun is just set. And if we go back some more, we're in the daytime. But I'll go back to 10 p.m., that is 22 hours. And notice also that this seconds digit right there is not changing. That's because the Stellarium controls are set to pause. If your seconds is moving, here's how to fix that. We'll just go down to the bottom toolbar. Go over here, and you can see if I click Run, now the seconds are running. But I would rather have that pause, so I will click the pause symbol shows, and I can set it back to zero seconds. Let's close that, and take a look now at what's in the sky. You see a lot of stars. You see the planet Saturn. You can see the faint Milky Way coming up from the horizon. The Milky Way is our own galaxy. We're getting an inside view of our own galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. But right now, this S shows that we're facing south. I want you to imagine that you're outside facing south. And now stretch out your left arm. If your left arm is outstretched, that means that left arm is pointing 
to the east. And so you can imagine turning your head from looking straight ahead south to looking over that left arm to look east. And so I'm going to click on the sky and rotate it. And you'll see that we come over to the east. It shows the stars that you would see looking eastward. Here's the planet Uranus. Of course, you can't see that because Uranus is very dim. And I can click the sky and come back to south. Now, on the other hand, if I point with my right hand up to the right, I'll be pointing west. And so let's imagine that you turn your head from south to look over your outstretched right arm and you'll be looking west. I'll click on the sky and turn it around. And now you're looking west. There's Jupiter and the other stars you would see if you were looking west. I'll click the sky, turn back to south. Now let's go all the way around the sky. You're looking south. Now we're going to start turning around, turning to your left. So we'll be looking east. So let's turn around. There's the stars that are in the east. We'll keep turning around and that will bring us around to the north. So now we're facing north. And you may recognize the seven stars of the Big Dipper over there on the left. We'll continue turning around. Now we're facing west. There's Jupiter. We'll continue turning around. And once again, we're facing south. If you take down a look down here on the bottom, you'll see there's a field of view number, and that just says what angular size of the sky you're looking at. Right now, you're looking at a piece going from side to side, so that's about 60 degrees across. That's normal human vision, and so if you want normal to see what normal human vision would give you, you can always set this FOV, field of view, number to 60. And you can change that by using your mouse wheel. You can zoom in or out. But if you come back to 60 or close to it, you'll have normal human vision. You see a lot of stars in the sky, but what are you looking at? If you go down to the bottom toolbar over on the left, that button will turn on the constellation line. There they are. Of course, you may not be familiar with constellations yet. And so let's click that second button, which turns on constellation labels. Here's Sagittarius over on the right, Capricornus, Aquarius, and other constellations. If you click the third button over from the right, you'll turn on the constellation art. And this shows figures from mythology uh, that are represented by the constellations. So let's turn that on. And you can see there's Sagittarius, a centaur with a bow and arrow. Here's Capricornus, half goat, half fish. Aquarius, the water bearer, water spilling out of the jug of Aquarius. And similarly, you have a figure for all 88 constellations. The sky is completely divided into 88 constellations. Every star in the sky belongs to one of those 88 constellations. So let's turn off the constellation art right now. And we can see what's, what constellation Saturn belongs to, for instance, by going down to the bottom toolbar. And this fourth button over shows the constellation boundaries. Let's turn that on. And you can see that Saturn is in the constellation of Sagittarius. Here are the boundary lines of Sagittarius. It goes a little bit off the screen, comes down and there. The star Fomalhaut 
is in the constellation of Pisces Austrinus. And we can do the same thing for every star. If you're looking at a star and you want to know what that star is called, you can click on it. And when you click on it, all of this information comes up about that star. Same thing for a planet. If you want to know, click on Saturn, for instance. Here's all the information about Saturn. And you can get rid of that information just by right-clicking anywhere on the screen. So that's how the constellations work. Let's turn off the uh, constellations. So turn off the boundaries, turn off the labels, turn off the lines. I'm going to drag the sky around just a little bit. Looking to the west, there's Jupiter again. And Stellarium, as you've seen, lets you zoom, zoom in on things. So let's click Jupiter. And we're going to go down to the bottom toolbar and click this box, which is right under the field of view number. And that will center the screen on Jupiter. Now, when you scroll with the mouse wheel, you can zoom in on whatever is at the center of the screen, which is Jupiter now. So let's turn the mouse wheel. We're zooming in. There's Jupiter. I'm going to right-click the screen to get rid of the information. And there we go. There's Jupiter and three of the moons that were discovered by Galileo. Galileo discovered four moons of Jupiter, but one of them is hidden behind Jupiter right now. And so you're looking at not only the planet Jupiter there, with the weather bands, but we're looking at Callisto, Io, and Europa, three of Jupiter's moons. The fourth moon, Ganymede, is hidden. Actually, Jupiter has many more moons than that, but Galileo discovered four of them. We can now go back out. And we'll return to a normal field of view of about 60 degrees. There it is. And let's turn back around south. Now, astronomers have some coordinates uh, that they like to look at. And I want to show you some of those uh, coordinates that astronomers use to describe the position of a star in the night sky. So two of the coordinates I'll show you first. One of them is called the equatorial grid. So I'm going to put that on. I'm going to grab the screen and just go down a little bit. Here is zero degrees. And this zero degrees line is a very special line. This line is directly above Earth's equator. So if there was a rubber band around a, a globe and you lifted that rubber band that's right around Earth's equator, if you lifted it straight up into space, that would be the celestial equator. And here it is at zero degrees. Some of the stars are above the celestial equator. So you can see the star Altair here is about nine degrees above the celestial equator. Here's zero degrees. There's the zero degrees symbol. Here's 10 degrees. The next line up is 10 degrees. And so the star Altair is about nine degrees above the celestial equator. We say that Altair's declination is plus nine degrees. On the other hand, if I go back down, the stars below the celestial equator have negative declinations. And so the declination of Saturn, here's the celestial equator at zero degrees, here's minus 10, here's minus 20. And so it looks like Saturn is probably at minus 23 degrees for its declination. So you can see exactly um, where Saturn is in the sky as far as above or below the celestial equator, which is, again, this blue line. You'll also notice that there are other numbers up here for these sort of vertical lines. These numbers are called right ascension. 
And you can see that the whole globe, the whole sky, is divided into 24 hours. This makes sense. There's 24 hours in a day. And so let's take a look at Saturn here. I'm going to pull the sky down just a little bit more so you can see better. Whoops, it won't let me do that. But under this control at the top, let's see, here's 21 hours, 20 hours, 19 hours is this vertical line. And so you can see that the right ascension of Saturn is at 19 hours. Okay, you'll learn more about that later. So let's turn off that equatorial grid. I'm going to come over here to the left toolbar again, and I'm going to open up the Sky and Viewing Options window. And I'm going to go over to Landscape. So we'll just click this one. Oops, I'm sorry, we're going to go over to Markings, not Landscape. And I can put the celestial, just the celestial equator on the sky by clicking this box that says Equator. And I'll close that for right now. And there is just a celestial equator on the sky. It lies right above Earth's equator. I'll go back to that same box, go back to markings, and I'm going to put up another line that's important for astronomy. It's called the ecliptic. There it is. I'll close that box. And this is the ecliptic. As Earth goes around the sun, the sun appears to move against different stars in the background. And the path followed by the sun through those distant background stars is called the ecliptic. And so the sun is usually found on the ecliptic. In fact, it's found right on the ecliptic. And the planets are always very close to the ecliptic. Here's Saturn. I'll drag the sky around a little bit more. Here's Jupiter. And other planets would also be found near the ecliptic. Coming back to south again. And I'll turn those two lines off again. So go to Sky and Viewing Options window, clear the equator box, clear the ecliptic box, and close. One more thing I want to show you is going down here on the bottom toolbar. And that is the Atmosphere button. And it allows me to turn off Earth's atmosphere. So you'd be seeing the stars as though you're seeing them on the very darkest night. So let's try that. I'm going to click that button. And all of a sudden, there's a lot more stars out. I'll click the button again to turn on the atmosphere. And that gives you a more natural appearing sky, I think because there's always a little bit of haze in the sky. Now I'm going to go over to the date and time window, and I'm going to go into the daytime. So let's just go backwards into the daytime. And there's the sun up there. Of course, this is about two o'clock in the afternoon. There's the sun. It's moving from the east to the west but we can't see the stars. That's because the blue sky is much brighter than the stars, and so the stars are just washed out. But if we go down and turn off the atmosphere, there are the stars that you would see if the Earth didn't have an atmosphere. And sure enough, the sun is right up there in the sky, along with Venus, Mercury, Let's just turn on the uh, ecliptic line again. Just click that. There's the ecliptic. Turn off that box. And you can see that the sun, the center of the sun, is right on the ecliptic. And Venus and Mercury are found close to the ecliptic. And as the sun moves from day to day to day, of course, the sun isn't moving. Earth is moving around the sun. But the sun appears to move through the constellations. And I'll just show you that real quick. So let's just go to our date and time window. And I'm just going to go one day at a time. So here's September 23rd. 
Here's the 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, and 30th. Ooh, there's the moon just going by. And here's October 1st. And so you can see how the sun moves through the distant background stars and how the moon moves against the distant background stars. I'll go down to the bottom box, turn the atmosphere back on, close the date and time window. I'll get rid of the ecliptic line. And let's go to a nighttime sky to end things. Date time window. Let's go back to 22 hours, 10 in the evening. There we go. So that's all there is to using Stellarium. It's fun to play around with. A couple of your optional observing projects will be done using Stellarium. But if you're outside at night and you see something and you want to know what that is, Stellarium can tell you. Finally, to end the program, here's all you have to do. Go down to this bottom window, the last button on the right, click that, and say goodbye to Stellarium.